Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and on this video I just wanted to quickly talk about movies that just let me down this year. It's I'm going to make this brief because I don't really like crapping on movies and stuff but at the same time when a movie lets you down I feel that um, I feel you need to just call it out and just just say what disappointed you. So uh, Quickly I want to say that um, Spectre didn't make my list because Although the although the plot was very convoluted and disappointing, on that regard, and its use of the villain was was really a big letdown for the film. There was still something some things I thoroughly enjoyed about that movie. For example, I thought the action scenes were just really awesome to watch, and you know the cinematography is just it's almost as good as Roger Deakins' work in Skyfall. It 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 it's it looks great and. That opening scene was just magnificent to watch. So, yeah, and there is um, there was also Crimson Peak because I want to see that a second time, and I was initially underwhelmed by that film. But it's one of those. The more I think about it, the more I can see that film actually growing on me a bit more on a return viewing. So I've decided not to put that one on the list. Mocking Jay almost made the list. In fact, had it not been for a certain movie I watched tonight it would have been at number five because Mockingjay was stretched horribly in my opinion and it really suffered because of it and yeah the last what the last one I thought was disappointing was this was Southpaw and that again that didn't make my list simply because the acting in it was superb but it was just a very cliched boxing movie. It was more or less a reskinned version of Rocky. But at the same time, it is a very enjoyable film, and I did enjoy the boxing scenes in it a lot. Actually, I felt I felt some adrenaline pumping, and you know the the character, the acting really made you buy into the characters for me. So it it saved it pretty much saved the movie for me. If if it wasn't for Jake Gyllenhaal or Forrest Whitaker, that movie would be very high on my list. But anyway, the these are my top five most disappointing films that. Uh, I saw in 2015 and my number 5 is Lost River which is the Ryan Gosling's directorial debut and it simply wasn't my cup of tea and you know that's that's why it's slow even though it's one of my least favourite films this year it's slow it's slow because it, it just wasn't it's like Nicholas Winding Refn's Only God, God Forgives which I simply could not stand it's I mean I hate I hate to disliking films that are really immaculately shot like this one and you know they they have a they have, they, they really it really does have an artistic merit to it and I usually love art films this is coming from somebody who loves 2001 a space odyssey Phil, vertigo you know for eyes wide shut there's another one that's a very artistic film enemy you know there's there's so many art films that really challenge that I love because they really challenge the way you think about film and this this might well be one of those kind of films for some people and you know that's great and you know but it simply wasn't my cup of tea because I didn't like um I just didn't I didn't like any of the characters I just didn't I didn't buy them at all I just didn't you know they they felt like the, everyone felt like a blank slate in this film and so there was nothing really to get invested in for me and there, there was that fetish thing and oh, some of the scenes in that are pretty grotesque and yeah also there was a mouse decapitation scene which I just didn't see a purpose to and that was pretty bad so yeah that's that's my number five pick and at number four I've gone with Furious 7 because Furious 7 is one of those films where everyone else seems to like it and I'm not that big a fan of it to be honest and the reason why is simply because of the way the action was filmed I just didn't I didn't like it it just it was all very, really big on jump cuts and stuff like that it was shot really weirdly in my opinion and Justin Lin had some really sleek looking Fast and Furious movies in my opinion it's with the last with the last three anyway I thought they were I thought they were really fun to watch but with this one I just I found it so jarring and it it really 
I just didn't like it and you know when it when it takes up 90% of the film as well it gets really jarring to watch for me and I thought the Paul Walker scenes were really handled well though and I think that um, the ending had a really nice poignancy about it that uh, I do appreciate with this film but nonetheless it, it's it just wasn't it just wasn't for me and that's why it's at number four and at number three I'm going with Jurassic World and Jurassic World was a disappointment not because it wasn't as good as the original I mean I can accept that because the original was an exceptional film but what I didn't like about this film was it didn't even try to be as good as the original. There was no sense of tension in this or, you know, the kids were extremely annoying in this film. There's too many plot devices going on. I mean, what happened to the days where people just kept it simple and, you know, there's one linear plot, which is what Jurassic Park has. And it's, you know, the tension just comes from that, you know, but... With this, there's like six or seven different plot points going on in this, and it's it's just it's a chore to follow it. And while it is fun, fun enough to watch, I mean, it's definitely better than the other sequels for sure. But it just is it just doesn't even come close to the majesty that is Jurassic Park. And it, the most disappointing thing is that it doesn't try to. There you go. I mean, it, there's. So that it plays so much on nostalgia as well, and you know, I mean, people complain about that in Star Wars, but the difference is in Star Wars they use it to to move the plot forward and make it more enjoyable to watch because you, you see, you you know, you see them having an active part without it taking over. With this one, you've got some guy wearing a T-shirt that says Jurassic Park on there, and it, she tells him to take it off, but and he goes, "Why the first one was legit." It look, it's like it knows it's an inferior film and it's that's its place, you know. You know, they don't have to try. So they do, all they need to do is big, make one big CGI dinosaur and it will rake the money and that's exactly what happened. It became the most highest grossing film of all time and it makes me wonder what audience's standards are with film, to be completely honest with you, because I think that's shocking. And at number two... I'm going with Brad Bird's Tomorrowland and this was my number one before I saw a certain movie last night but Brad Bird's Tomorrowland was so disappointing because Brad Bird when he works with Disney you had some quality stuff from him you had you had The Incredibles you had Ratatouille you had you know you've had other great films from Brad Bird too like the the Iron Giant which he did for Warner Brothers and that's one of my favorite animated films of all time his first live action film was Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol and that was a really great film it was one of the best of the franchise in my opinion and so this this film with the premise where she touches this badge and it takes her to this world and I was so looking forward to this film and I even went to see it despite some mixed reviews about this film because I wanted to judge for myself and you know again it's a movie that people like and I, I, you know I can see why to some extent because it's not a bad film it's just it's just not a great one because I just found the plot so boring and forgettable and there's too much there's there's way too much time spent doing character development and there's not really enough that happens and you don't see enough of this world which this film was really crying out for and yeah that's why I found Tomorrowland disappointing it, it's simply because it could have been much better than it was and it just turned out to be just standard Disney in my opinion but you know I mean it felt like it was setting up for like a franchise but you need your first one to be stronger than that and it wasn't. My number one most disappointing movie of the year is Ron Howard's At the Heart of the Sea and this one what was that I mean Ron Howard's last directed film was Rush and that was a superb movie it was you know it made me care about characters that come from a sport that I don't really follow and it made me care about it made me care about James Hunt and Nicky Lauder played by Chris Hemsworth and Daniel Brawl and they were so superb in this film and you know the rivalry was just so believable that 
it, I, I just loved it. I, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen when I watched it. It's one of my favourite movies of 2013. And, you know, this film, I just thought it wasn't a patch on Rush, in my opinion. It was just a very dull film to watch because the characters just didn't... The, there was no weight to anything that happened. The characters, I did not care about them. And, you know, the, the CGI is done well in places i mean the whales that 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 massive whale was so beautifully done in this film and it does it does look nice basically this film it it has a really beautiful look to it but when you're not invested in any of the characters or the plot or anything like that it just makes the film just such a letdown and in my opinion this film i was just i was just so bored watching it and you know considering it's only a two hour film i felt every second of those two hours it really it really was a painful experience to watch simply because it's a competent film that's just boring and you know ron howard is capable of so much better than this behind the camera and i wouldn't recommend seeing this film in theaters at all just watch star wars for the seventh time because you know that's what you're going to be doing and it's a cracking film so, yeah, as, as far as worst films of the year goes, that one would easily be Seventh Son, because I, I don't really go out of my way to watch crap, but there was nothing on, and I, I, my cousin wanted to watch it, so I dragged my feet and went, and it was as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was just, it was just so, the, the CGI was just laughably bad in this film, and the performances, Jeff Bridges acted like he was drunk on every scene. And I think he read the script because, wow, he he just, that was the biggest I don't give a shit performance of the year. And Julianne Moore, what was she doing? I mean, it was like, it was like she was trying to sabotage her own chance for, chances of winning an Oscar for the, for, for Still Alice. I just, wow. I mean, I can't believe that came out in the same month, but. Oh well, so yeah, that that's that's basically my top five most disappointing films of twenty fifteen, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know if what your most disappointing films, and did you like any of these films on this list as well? Because you know I can see people enjoying them, and it's just my opinion at the end of the day. And you know it's it's not it's not written in stone or set in concrete or anything like that. People can, you know, people are going to enjoy things that I don't like, and that's the beauty of film, and that's that's why art is such a subjective form. So, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to comment and subscribe, and hit the hit the thumbs up button as well, and I'll catch you on the next video.